Well, praise the Lord and good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for coming into our virtual Bible study here at New Direction Worship Center, where we believe in multiplying faithful men and women for the glory of God. I'm excited tonight about the brief moment that we're going to spend together. And I pray that your day has been one that was satisfying and fulfilling for you and God. Would you be so kind enough uh, to go into the chat and tell someone good evening, tell someone good evening tonight, and we appreciate all of you coming into our service on tonight. Look, let's, uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so grateful and we're so thankful for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us today. Just another day is enough to be thankful for, Father. We not only appreciate you, but we celebrate the fact that you are good, you are mighty, and you are merciful, and you are a God who still speaks to his children. Thank you for not being so high where that you don't forget about us that are low. And even on tonight, Father, not only do we celebrate your character, we celebrate what you are doing in our lives. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for covering us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping your arms around us. Thank you for never lying to us. Thank you for keeping your promises to us. Thank you for helping us to understand things that don't make sense to us. Thank you, Lord, for providing us guidance while we're on this journey. We bless you for Jesus. We thank you for a wonderful Savior. We thank you that Jesus is our advocate. Jesus is our intercessor. Jesus is our perfect substitute. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is whatever we need him to be. Thank you, Jesus, for doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. And not only do we bless you, Father, for providing us with Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our sacred spaces, coming to our homes, coming to wherever we may be and speak clearly to us. Tonight, Father, we want to be blessed by your word. If blessed means changing us, if blessed means convicting us, if blessed means converting us, just don't leave us the way you found us. We want to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. And we, oh God, believe that our best days are ahead of us and our worst days are behind us. Thank you. Thank you that in this coming weekend, we'll be celebrating our independence as a country. But more importantly, we want to celebrate our independence from the enemy. Thank you for freeing us. Thank you for our spiritual freedom that's found in Jesus Christ. Now, oh God, speak to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and let every heart Oh, say amen. Why don't you do me a favor? And even though we can't see each other, why don't you give God a hand of praise tonight for his wonderful and his marvelous acts of kindness towards you and I. I've got some witnesses tonight, Pastor. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, we wouldn't have made it. Look, grab your Bibles, grab your devices tonight. Grab whatever means of communication that you use as it relates to reading the word of God and come go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. As we were studying uh, 1 Corinthians this uh, week as uh, a part of our daily reading, something just stuck out to me in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 11 through 13. 
And tonight, I just want to talk about the good news, the good news about temptation, the good news about temptation. That's what the Bible says, that when it comes to temptation, God has given us a way of escape. Come go with me to chapter 10, verse 11. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. In verse 11, it says, all these events happen to them as an example for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the time when this age is drawing to a close. If you think you are standing strong, be careful for you too may fall into the same sin. But remember that the temptation that comes into your life are no different from the other experiences and God is faithful. He will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you that you can stand up against it. And God is faithful. He will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can stand up against it. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you will not give in to it. I love this passage of scripture and may the word of God bless us on tonight. And I want to talk about the good news about temptation. My brothers and sisters, doesn't matter how old, how young, how much you know, how little you know, all of us will be tempted at some point in time in our lives. The real news or the good news about temptation is temptations are neither good nor bad. But the general idea or the general definition of temptation simply means to test or prove. Simply what it is saying is God is testing you to prove something about you or about himself. And whether or not you understand, temptations really come to examine us and temptations come to prove certain things about us. And temptations will work for you if you respond to temptations correctly. I would encourage you that in your time of devotion and your intimacy with God, that you would read all of chapter 10 that make up the context of our text. But when it comes to verses 1 through 13 in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul, Paul, the gospel globe trotter, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, writes to a church at Corinthians to give them an example of the danger of the danger of the danger of not understanding or being overconfident when it comes to your freedom as a Christian. Oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, we think that freedom is something that once we get it, we can do anything we want to do with it. But Paul is warning them in verses 1 through 13 to be careful that when God sets you free, that you don't use your freedom as a license to do wrong. He starts out in verse 1 by reminding the children of God of what happened to the children of God in in old, when they were released from bondage out of Egypt, and God brought them out of Egypt through the Red Sea and brought them into the promised land. He said that God did all that for them, and instead of them responding correctly to their freedom, they responded inappropriately to their freedom. And the problem occurred that now because they didn't appreciate the freedom that they had, that many of them lost their lives in the wilderness and never made it to the promised land. You remember the story of how the spies went in and got the report. And because many of the spies that did not believe the report that God had a land for Israel flowing with milk and honey, he caused them or he did not allow them 
to enter into the promised land. Many of the people that came out of Egypt never entered into the promised land because there was 40 years of wandering and many of those individuals died because they became overconfident when it came to their freedom. And the biggest question in the chapter 10 of the book of 1 Corinthians where the, the, the new Christians wanted to know if we can eat the meat of the idols. Now that we're Christians, what kind of freedoms do we really have? Now, meat doesn't mean anything to you these days, but some of the questions we may ask is, as a Christian, can we go to a party? As a Christian, can we partake of certain indulges such as marijuana and such indulges? as liquor and wine, as a Christian, what are we allowed to do? And Paul warns them that just because you have this freedom, be careful not to abuse this freedom and become overconfident because in verse 11, it says that the same thing that happened to them will happen to you that you will enter into sin and God will have to intervene and cause some problems or uh, make some adjustments in your life. Here's the good news tonight about temptation, my brothers and sisters. Number one, write this down. According to verse 11 and verse 12, uh, the Bible says that God has not promised to shield us from temptation. Write that down. God has not promised to shield you from temptation. No, 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 no. In all actuality, God allows temptations to test you because life is a test. God says, when I can test you, I can trust you. And when I can trust you, I can use you. And some of us are so overconfident as it relates to what we will do or won't do that God has to send temptations into our lives or allow temptations temptations in our lives to expose some truths about us. And so number one, here's the good news about temptation. God has not promised to shield us from temptation. Look what it says right there in verse 11. All these events happen to them as an example for us, you've got some examples around you that will show you if you do what they do, the same thing will happen to you. How is it, my brothers and sisters, that you think you can practice the same thing other people practice and the same results don't happen to you? You don't have to learn by doing them. You can learn by paying attention to what happens to other people. I've got a few people on here testify tonight, you don't want to do that. You don't want to drink that. You don't want to do that. And the truth of the matter is, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says that you have freedom, but you have freedom in Christ, which means it comes with boundaries. It comes with limitations. That in Christ means that I have the ability to go into evil, and if I respond correctly, evil won't overtake me. But I know and you know that we've got some weakness, weaknesses and we've got to create boundaries. And oftentimes God shows up in the forms of temptations or allows temptations, allows temptations not to trip you up, but to expose weak areas and strong areas in our lives that in the strong area, you will say, thank you, Jesus. In the weak area, you'll say, help me, Jesus. But not only is there good news about temptation, God has not promised to shield us from temptation, but notice this, God has promised to see us through temptations. Verse 13 says, but remember that temptations that come into your life are no different from what others experiences. 
First of all, you're not the first to go through it. You think you are, but you're not the first to go through it. You're not the first to get lied on. You're not the first to lose a loved one. You're not the first to be mistreated. You're not the first to have something good happen to you. And you ain't the first to have something bad happen to you. Sometimes we get tempted not by necessarily bad things, but sometimes we get tempted by good things. Look what it says. And God is faithful. He will keep the temptation from becoming so strong. I like this because even when the temptation is strong, God will keep it from getting too strong so you can stand up underneath it. Number one, God has promised not to uh, keep us from temptations, but God has promised to see us through temptations. What does this reveal about God? One thing it reveals about God is it reveals God's wisdom. God knows how much you and I can handle. Quit thinking he's putting more on you than you can bear. God sees something in you more than you see about yourself. Not only does it reveal God's wisdom, but it also reveals God's faithfulness that when temptations comes, not only do I know what to allow to come into your life, I also am faithful when it comes into your life that he'll give you strength to resist it. But not only does it reveal his faithfulness and it reveals his wisdom, but it also reveals his love. Here's the good news about temptation. Number one, God is not going to keep it from you. But number two, God is going to help you through it. And when it helps you through it, God is, he, it reveals his wisdom. It reveals his wisdom. It reveals his what? His faithfulness. It reveals God is faithful. He will not be allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, but then God loves you. So my next question is, if God is wise and God is faithful and God is loving me through temptations, then why am I falling? Here's where we close it down. You will be able to overcome temptation when first of all, you get rid of your confidence or your overconfidence. Quit thinking you can go places. Quit thinking you can come into the presence of people and you not sin. There is some times in your life where you've got to establish some boundaries. Ricky Smiley said it best. Best, he said his culture does not like boundaries. Ricky, Ricky, what? Uh, 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 Ricky Smiley says, I've set boundaries in my life and people don't like it when you've got boundaries in your life because they think they should be able to say things and do things. And when they cross those boundaries, that's when Ricky Smiley said, I cuss them out. But I'm not telling you to cuss people out, but I am telling you that you've got to set some boundaries as it relates to dealing with your temptation. When you're dating, you've got to set some boundaries. When you're spending your money, you've got to set some boundaries. When you're dealing with certain people, you've got to set some boundaries. You know they evil. Quit going around them. You've got to set some boundaries. Somebody say, I've got to set some boundaries. When it comes to what I eat, I've got to set some boundaries. It can't be Thanksgiving all year long. I've got to set some boundaries on how long I stay on social media. I've got to set, set some boundaries on how long that, uh, uh, or how much I drink or how much I consume. You and I have to set some boundaries or temptations will overtake you. And one of the things that you and I have to do is these three things in order to overcome temptation, that when they come, when they come to test me, when they come to prove whether I'm righteous, when they come, whether they come to prove whether I am holy, when they come to prove what at what type of person that I am, you and I must understand that there's three things that you got to do. One, Jesus tells them in Mark, he says, watch as well as pray 
at least you enter into temptation. Number one, guess what you got to do? You got to pray. You got to ask God for help. You know you overconfident when you face situations and you don't pray. You know you overconfident when you go through a day and don't ask God to help you. You know you're overconfident that, yes, you can go into a club. Yes, you can go and dance, but you better take God with you. And then you got to be careful because the club might be good for you but it might not be good for your testimony. You've got to learn to see the big picture so you can make the big choice. It says, number one, the reason why I'm not overcoming temptation is because I don't pray and seek the will of God and seek the word of God and seek the ways of God. If you talk to God, God will give you strength. Jesus says, pray when it comes to temptation. But then number two, this is how I overcome temptation. I need to trust that God will help me. That's the good news tonight, my brothers and sisters, that you can trust God to help you. You can trust God to help you keep your mouth closed. And you can trust God to help you to keep your clothes on. And you can trust God to keep you from responding correctly. If you would just do what God said to do. You don't need, you don't need, you don't need anything other than to trust him to help you in a time of need. God is faithful. He will give you strength to stand up underneath it, and he'll give you strength to keep you from crumbling and falling. You don't need to run from the rain. You just need a umbrella in the rain. You don't need to run from temptation. You just need the truth to endure the temptation. There's times you ought to stand. There's times you ought to run. But whatever God tells you to do, do it. There was a man in our Bible class. I mean, not in our Bible class, but in our uh in, in Bible college, and he cried every Monday night about how he used to fall into temptation with the same woman. And he says, God is not helping me. And the instructor or the professor said, I think God did help you. He says, show me where he helped me. She said, tell me the story. And the and he, she, he tells the professor the story. She called me. She came over and said she wanted to wash clothes. And once she got there, everything happened. He says, I see where God helped you so many times. Did you have to pick up the phone? No. Did you have to tell her she could come over and use the uh, uh, wash machine? No. Did you have to open the door? No. And when she came in, could you have ran out? He says, God helped you so many times. And that's my word for somebody. You don't have to fall into temptations, but you can trust God that he will give you boundaries and he will give you wisdom on how to deal with it. You want to get out of temptation? Pray. Trust God. And the last thing, focus on Jesus Christ. That's where I shut it down. Can I tell you something? You don't have a savior who didn't go through everything you went through. Whatever Jesus did when he faced the temptation, you ought to do the same thing Jesus did. When Jesus was tempted to come down off the cross, he stayed there all day Friday. Then he went in the grave Friday, and then he went all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning. You know the story because guess what he did? He gave us the example on how to endure temptations. He didn't respond to everybody. He didn't challenge everybody. But on the cross, he talked to his father. 
He fulfilled the will of the Father, and he got up on Sunday. The temptation to come down, Jesus stayed up. And that's my challenge to you tonight. Don't come down. Don't let nobody pull you down. And show sure enough, don't let temptations keep you down. For your God is faithful to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can imagine or ever think of. He showed up for Daniel. He showed up for Moses. He showed up for Abraham. He showed up for you and I. He showed up for Jesus. And if he showed up before, he'll show up again. Stop being overconfident. Pray. Pray to God. Trust God. And sometimes in trusting him, you got to wait on God. But not only trusting, but focus on Jesus. Jesus, not the preacher. How did Jesus walk 33 years and never seen it? He had the word of God. He had a relationship with God. And he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. The same three things that you had. And then he put himself around people who were going in the same direction. My challenge to you, my brothers and sisters, in the year of 2022, let's continue to grow and let's overcome temptations. How can you two walk together unless they agree? Find people who agree to live right. And make sure, make sure that the company that you keep is more people who want to do right than more people who want to do wrong. And Father, how we thank you for your word tonight and how we bless you for giving us the good news about temptation. No, you're not going to keep it from us, but yes, you're going to get us through it. Thank you for your support and thank you for your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You have just heard the word of God from Pastor Michael A. Searcy. Please join us Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for worship service and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for Bible study. To register for our virtual services, please visit our service page at www.newcsafeplace.com. May God bless you and may God keep you.